Hello, today we're going to take a look at our Chapter 7 FST test, which covers uh, concepts around rational functions. Uh, starting with number one, finding the domain for this rational function. Uh, in order to really determine that domain, we will need to factor the denominator for that rational function. So uh, an x squared plus 2x minus 3 would factor as an x plus 3 and an x minus 1. So the domain for that uh, will have to be all real numbers except uh, negative 3 and positive 1. Uh, again, you could write that in interval notation, I suppose, but just to be uh, kind of quick and easy, I'll just do it that way. Uh, so that's the domain for that function. Moving on to number 2, we just want to reduce this rational expression. Write that in lowest terms. One thing to keep in mind there is as we reduce that, we can really think of just the 30 and the 2, just think of the m's and just think of the p's. So we really separate out those pieces. Uh, 30 divided by 2 will give us 15. Uh, the m to the 5th over the m to the 9th. So again, what happens there, we use our uh, properties for exponents. Since there are more m's on bottom, they will end up down there. And 9 minus 5 gives me 4. So m to the 4th in the denominator. Same sort of thing happens with the p. There's a p squared on top versus a p on the bottom, so they end up on top. Difference between 2 and 1 is just 1, so p to the 1st. So we end up with 15p over m to the 4th for number 2. Moving on to number 3, same sort of idea as 2, except uh, with number 2 it was all monomials. Here we've got trinomials and a binomial. What we need to do is get these in factored form so that we can see if we have anything that we can cancel out. Again, one thing we certainly cannot do is we cannot cancel out like k squared here, or k squared there, or reduce the 14 and the 28. Okay, so there's nothing like that that we can do because those are not factors um, in the numerator and denominator. So what we need to do is write that in factored form. Um, I'll go through the factoring fairly quickly. Uh, the k squared plus 9k plus 14 will factor as a k plus 2 and a k plus 7. The k squared plus 11k plus 8 will factor as a k plus 4 and a k plus 7. The k squared plus 4k, we can take a k out of that, and then we get a k plus 4. So again, just taking out the common factor. k squared plus 8k plus 16 will factor as k plus 2 and k plus 8. So I'll even try to kind of color code my crossing out here. So the k plus 2's cancel out. The k plus 4's cancel out. The k plus 7's cancel out. It looks like all I am left with here is this k over k plus 8. So again, that's all we have is this k here on top and that k plus 8 there. So that's what we end up with uh, once we reduce that down. For number 4, it's going to be similar to number 3. However, we are dividing. So notice, again, we have that division there. So uh, I'll still factor my 3p minus 3. And then what I'll do is I'll flip and factor this at the same time. So the 7p squared ends up on top take a 5 out of the 5p minus 5 and we get p minus 1. Uh, so the p minus 1's cancel. Um, oops, for some reason I wrote a 3 here instead of a p. It's interesting. Um, let's see, we've got a p squared on top and a p on bottom, so that will end up being just plain p. On top, we've got a 7 and a 3 and a 5. The 5 will not reduce the 7 or the 3, so we end up with 21p over 5. Same sort of thing for number 5, except again a bit more uh, factoring. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's see, a z squared plus 6z plus 8. Of course, they have to mix z's and 2's together because this will factor as plus 2 and plus 4. And then uh, another z plus 2. 
and along with a z plus 5 to give us the z squared plus 7, z plus 10. And again, what I'll do is I'll change the operation to multiplication. But then what that means is I'll have to flip this around when I factor it. So the z will come out of the bottom now, and we get um, z plus 4. And then the z squared plus 8z plus 15 ends up on top, and that's a z plus 5 and a z plus 3. Uh, let's see, again, we can uh, cancel some things out. So those z plus 2s, the z plus 5s, and the z plus 4s. This looks like all we're left with are the z and the z plus 3. So... The simplified form for this ends up being z plus 3 over z. And again, don't think that you can reduce the z's down. The z on the top is part of a sum, so it's not a, an actual factor there. So that's number 5. Number 6, we're adding these together. Now, nice thing about number 6 is that we already have a common denominator. So when we add those fractions together, the denominator will stay the same. We'll just have 7 plus 3, which I'm sure you already knew that that was 10 over 13x. Always reduce your fraction if you can, but 10 and 13 don't reduce. So that is all we can do with that one. All right, for number 7, we are adding these together and then reducing it down as much as possible. Uh, we will need to uh, come up with an LCD for this one. So our LCD, in order to figure that out, we would want to factor all of our denominators, however they are already factored. Now a common mistake here is to think that the you can just have R minus 7 as the LCD, as if that R just gets rolled in and consumed by that. Um, again, that's not the case. We need the product R and R minus 7 together um, as the entire LCD. So what we'd want to do is multiply the 3 over r plus 7 by r over r, and the 2 over r by r minus 7 over r minus 7. Um, and again, the way that's okay to do that in those two different spots because we're multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing. So that's the same as multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the value of any expression. Now let's see, on the top there with the 2 times the r minus 7, we'll get 2r minus 14. And we do want the numerator in standard form, not factored form. Um, and then we get 3r over r times r minus 7. Um, again, with this, now those denominators are the same. I can really add the two numerators together. In this case, I can combine the 2r and the 3r. So we get 5r minus 14 over the r times r minus 7. And so then it looks like that. Uh, we would reduce if we could, but that 5r minus 14 does not factor, and so we don't have um, any factors that we can reduce there. For number 8, we are subtracting. Uh, notice, though, the denominator for number 8, that's 7 minus x, um, Again, it's a little goofy. What we would like to do with this is to figure out that 7 minus x is the same as the opposite of x minus 7. Um, again, it's a common trick that they will uh, do with that kind of expression. So then we can have our 8 over x minus 7 minus our 4 over the opposite of x minus 7. Now this negative... Again, you've got a negative as uh, part of a uh, fraction, and so that negative can really move either to the numerator, it can be in the denominator, or it can be out in front. So really what I would do is use that negative uh, in a way to cancel out the subtraction, changing it to adding, and then we just have the x minus 7. Uh, so at that point, they do have a common denominator, and we can go ahead and combine the numerators. So in this case, adding 8 and 4 gives us 12. Um, again, it uh, doesn't reduce it all, so that would be all we would do for that one. All right, for number 9, we are uh, simplifying a complex fraction. 
Um, in this case, it's, it's very much just like a division problem. We have our numerator, we have our denominator. So what we do is we take our numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of our denominator. Uh, and then that ends up becoming x times x plus 4 over 63. Uh, you certainly could distribute the x across the x plus 4. It would give you x squared plus 4x. Um, not much point in doing that as it doesn't lead anywhere. Um, so I would probably just leave it like this. And notice, again, we don't have any factors that we can reduce. All right, so number 10 is similar to number 9, difference being that we don't just have a fraction over a fraction this time. We've got uh, an addition or sum over another sum. So we need to write that sum as just a single fraction. The LCD for the numerator would just be x. So if I multiply my 4 over 1 by x over x, then I get 4x over x plus 2 over x, which ends up equaling 4x plus 2 over x. Now, some people might not catch this right away, um, but it is kind of useful at this point if you do see that you can take a 2 out of that. So we get a 2x plus 1 over x. Again, don't be afraid to write out all these steps. It can be very helpful. Um, now the LCD for the denominator would be 8. <coughs> Excuse me. So the 8, 1 eighth already has that. The x over 4, what we need to do is multiply that by 2 over 2. And so that ends up becoming 2x plus 1, or really 2x over 8 plus 1 over 8 which then is 2x plus 1 over 8. Uh, and so notice at that point we do have our denominator written as a single fraction. I'll just copy it down over here again. So we have our numerator, we have, or sorry, that's our denominator, and we have our numerator. What we can do is multiply again the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. I'll do that down here. So 2 and then the 2x plus 1 over x multiplied by the reciprocal. So the 8 goes on top and the 2x plus 1 goes on bottom. I'm just going to put parentheses around that to emphasize. Notice those 2x plus 1's match, so we can cancel those out. In the numerator we get 2 times 8, which is 16. Denominator is just a plain x. And so that's what that complex fraction simplifies to be. All right, so looking at number 11, um, we've got some different work to do on top uh, as opposed to the bottom. Um, on the top, wanna make sure you take a close look at that 16s squared minus 64t squared. That will factor. That's that uh, difference of squares factoring pattern. Those of you in my class know how much I like that factoring pattern, so hopefully you're uh, getting good at these. So that factors as a 4s plus 8t times a 4s minus, oh, let me, hold on, let me see this a second. Okay, so, and I've done this before too. So it looks like there's actually a common factor of 16 that we can take out of that. So let's take that 16 out first. It'll still have that difference of squares pattern. Um, again, this doesn't happen all the time, me making that mistake or uh, the common factor being there. But it's nice if you can take that common factor out first, then we get s squared minus 4t squared. It should make things a bit easier, uh, but we'll have a couple more steps to uh, go from there. Um, since I'm right here and I don't want to be uh, sliding back and forth, let me uh, work on the denominator here. The LCD for the denominator would be TS or ST, doesn't make a difference. So the 4 over T needs to be multiplied by S over S, and the 8 over S needs to be multiplied by T over T. So we get our denominator of uh, 4S over ST minus 8T over ST. So again, that's the denominator. If we scoot over this way, uh, let's see, so if I go back to the numerator now, again, that s squared minus 4t squared will factor as s plus 2t, 
and s minus 2t all over an st. And in the denominator, since those have a common denominator, then we can simplify that down to be 4s minus 8t over st. So that's our denominator. Now notice in that denominator, the uh, 4s minus 8t has a common factor of 4, so we would want to factor that out. Um, and then we'll also kind of multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. And I think I'll take care of that down here so that I will have enough room. So here's the numerator, s plus 2t, s minus 2t over an st, and then if I flip this over and multiply, then the st ends up on top, and take that 4 out, and the s minus 2t ends up on bottom. So again, if I can cancel some things out so that s and t both cancel out, and really, you know, really the s cancels out the s, and the t cancels out the t, uh, but they both get canceled out the s minus 2 t's would cancel out. And so in the numerator, we've got the 16 and the s plus 2 t. In the denominator, we have the 4. Again, the 16 and 4 don't cancel out completely, but of course the 4 will reduce the 16 down to a 4. So we actually have, no longer have, even a denominator at all. The 16 over 4 reduces to be 4, and then we have s plus 2 t. Um, and so that's what that complex fraction simplifies down to be. All right, so number 12, we have some negative exponents. So we want to uh, deal with those. So in this case, we would uh, start with a 1 over x to the 4th plus a 1 over y to the 4th. And then continue in the denominator with a 1 over x plus a 1 over y. Um, again, there's a couple of different ways you could do this type of problem. Uh, you could identify that the LCD for the entire thing was x to the fourth, y to the fourth. Um, or you could uh, add the fractions together in the numerator and add the fractions together in the denominator and then go from there. Uh, I think I am going to decide to multiply both the top and bottom by the LCD for both, which again is x to the fourth, y to the fourth. Um, so we multiply top and bottom by that. And so this pair product really distributes to both the numerator and uh, the denominator, or distributes over both of them, I should say. So in the numerator, when I multiply 1 over x to the fourth by x to the fourth, y to the fourth, then the x to the fourths cancel, and I have just y to the fourth. And then we multiply 1 over y to the fourth by x to the fourth, y to the fourth. And the y to the fourths cancel, so we get y to the fourth plus x to the fourth. Uh, of course, you could rearrange that, it would not make a difference there. In the denominator, 1 over x is not going to completely cancel the x to the fourth, so we get x cubed y to the fourth, and 1 over y likewise won't cancel out the entire y to the fourth, uh, but we will get an x to the fourth y cubed for that one. Um, there is a common factor in the denominator of an x cubed y cubed, um, however that's not going to, actually hold on, so we should probably do that actually, sorry. Um, took me a second to see that. So if I have a y to the fourth plus x to the fourth on the top, and I factor out an x cubed, y cubed on the bottom, I'm left with a y to the fourth plus x to the fourth there. Parentheses here to emphasize, and the y to the fourth plus x to the fourth cancels out. Now since there's nothing left on the top, again remember this y to the fourth plus x to the fourth is always being multiplied by one. And so we actually end up with 
a uh, 1 over x cubed y cubed. So they almost caught me there. I almost didn't see that uh, factoring would give me something that would cancel out. So make sure you, again, think that through and only really skip that if you're sure that it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so taking a look at 13, again, I uh, just wanted to zoom out a little bit so we could see the full direction. So without actually solving this equation, list all possible numbers that would have to be rejected if they appeared as potential solutions. So again, we're looking at really the restrictions on those solutions created by um, having the denominators x plus 19 and x plus 3. So we have those denominators. So if we were to come up with a solution of negative 19, that one would have to be restricted because x cannot be negative 19. And if we were to get a negative 3, that would have to be, uh, again, thrown out as a solution because it's uh, not possible. So again, negative 19 and negative 3 would be the two solutions that would be deemed extraneous if they did come up as potential solutions. That's all we're looking at there for number 13. Number 14, we're actually solving the equation. Again, a good uh, approach that we've had success with uh, here is multiplying the entire equation by the LCD for the entire equation. In this case, the LCD for the whole thing would be x squared. So multiplying the whole equation by x squared. So again, I'm getting a little lazy there. Uh, but this x squared will distribute to the 1 to the 1 over x and to the 90 over x squared. So everything on uh, every term really on either side. Of course, 1 times x squared is x squared. Uh, 1 over x times x squared would just be x. And of course, 90 over x squared times x squared is just 90. Um, since it is quadratic with that x squared there, we would want to subtract the 90 from both sides so that we could have this equal to 0. And it might seem like it would be a pain to factor, but it actually factors pretty nicely just as an x plus 10 times an x minus 9. And so we end up with solutions of negative 10 and a positive 9. Now, earlier I hadn't really looked at considering extraneous solutions, but with the LCD of just an x squared, the only extraneous solution would be 0, which we did not come up with. So it appears that these two would be good to go. And of course, it's solving an equation, so it does not hurt to just take the negative 10 or the 9, plug it back into the original, and make sure that it works. All right, for number 15, um, again, if we looked at figuring out what the LCD turns out to be, we would get t and then a negative 2t plus 6. Um, so we could multiply both sides by the LCD. Now, doing that, the shortcut for that when you have a fraction equals a fraction is just to cross multiply. Of course, I've already identified what multiplying uh, or what the LCD would be, so we'd multiply both sides by that. Um, so again, the cross multiplication is just a shortcut to doing that step. And so if we were to, again, think of this as cross multiplying, we would have the 2 times the negative 2t plus 6, and then the t times t, which of course will be a t squared. Uh, but we get a negative 4t plus 12 over here. Now we want the t squared to be positive, so I would probably add the 4t and subtract the 12. So we would get 0 equals t squared plus 4t minus 12. Um, again, hopefully the factoring doesn't give you uh, any difficulties here. This just factors as t uh, plus 6 and t minus 2. So it appears the solutions are negative 6 and positive 2. And if I look uh, back at my LCD, um, the t and negative 2t plus 6. So because of the t, then t can't be 0. And the negative 2t plus 6 actually means that t can't equal 3. Again, we would set uh, negative 2t plus 6 equal to 0. Um, you might add the 2t, maybe. Uh, you could also subtract the 6 either way. You divide by the 2, you get uh, 3 equals t. So again, that's what t can't really equal because that would make our denominator 0. So being that we got negative 6 and 2, those should both be fine. All right, so looking at number 16, our LCD would be x plus 4, x minus 4. 
and so we would multiply both sides of the equation by that. So the 12 gets multiplied by the x plus 4, x minus 4. The 1 also gets multiplied by that, and of course the 14 over x plus 4 also. Since the 12 is over an x minus 4, the x minus 4s would cancel, and the 12 would really just be multiplied by x plus 4. The 1 would be multiplied by both. Now the product of x plus 4, x minus 4 is x squared minus 16. So I'm just going to put that in here. And then the 14, since that is over an x plus 4, would really just be multiplied by x minus 4. Uh, and so it would look like that. So we've got a bit of simplifying to do, and it looks like we did end up with a quadratic. So a couple steps to uh, simplify and really start to solve this one. We get 12x plus 48 equals the x squared minus 16 plus the 14x minus 56. Um, I would recommend cleaning up the right-hand side there first before attempting to do operations to both sides. This is the kind of area where people make mistakes, but the minus 16 and minus 56 together make minus 72. And then we'll subtract the 12x and the 48 and again, it might seem like uh, this, will, this will turn out to be kind of a pain to factor um, because we have a minus 120. However, um, it actually factors pretty well with just an x plus 12, x minus 10. So it appears that our solutions are negative 12 and positive 10. And... Uh, let's see, our denominators were x plus 4, x minus 4, so positive and negative 4 would be out, so negative 12, positive 10 work out just fine. Uh, moving on to 17, you can notice right away that this would factor as x times x minus 7, so that is our LCD, it's just x times x minus 7, so each piece will be multiplied by that. So the 7 will cancel out the x minus 7, just be multiplied by x. The 10 will get multiplied by the x minus 7, and the negative 70 just cancels out the full denominator. So we don't appear to have a quadratic this time. We do end up with 7x plus 10x minus 70 equals negative 70. Well, that'll be interesting because that will end up saying that 17x equals 0. Uh, so we divide by 17, we get x equals 0. Now, this is a problem because part of our LCD was just a plain x. So 0 would be extraneous solution, and since there was no other solution found, there would be no solution. If we look at 18, the LCD is 14x. So everything gets multiplied by that. The 4 would get multiplied by 2. Uh, the 1 would be multiplied by a 7. And the negative, or negative 1 14th ends up being negative 1 times an x. So we get 8 plus 7 equals negative x. Uh, so 15 equals negative x, and x equals negative 15. Uh, no problem with extraneous solutions there. Um, and so that ends up being uh, all that we have for that one. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching. No, we'll go on to um, the next section today.